Welcome to the Late Show, everybody. I'm Stephen Colbert. Uh, listen, I'd like to start tonight by wishing my Jewish viewers a happy new year because today is Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> Traditionally, the Jewish community welcomes the year by blowing the shofar or ram's horn right here. John Lampley, can, can I get a G, please? Oh my goodness, John! You ever smell a dead ram? Yeah. <laughs> give that a, come on, give that a little whiff right there. Oh my oh, God! Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh. Pass next time. Oh my goodness! Haven't the Jewish people suffered enough? <laughs> oh. oh my goodness! Oh, that is that is about as dead as a ram can get right there. Now on the Jewish calendar, uh, this is the first day of the year 5777, and you know what that means? It's time for my new. Sexy rabbi's wall calendar. Whoa! Well, yeah. Well, all I can say is Shana Tova. I wouldn't mind letting him dip my apples in honey. Oh, oh. I'm so glad that beefcake is kosher. Mm. Oh, oh. Here he is, holding a loaf of challah. <laughs> and, oh, that's too spicy. There we go. Oh, that's a little too spicy, too. Oh, there we go. Mmm, shofar, show good. <laughs> Move over, Elijah. I'm saving a seat for him. Of course, this Rosh Hashanah has been a somber one for many because they're mourning the passing of former Israeli President Shimon Peres. And this weekend, world leaders went to the funeral, including former President Bill Clinton, and future former President Barack Obama. And look what happened when it was time for them to go. Jim? <laughs> what can I say? What am I going to do? I'm just trying to hang a little bit longer. What can I say? The Jews love me. It's amazing. <laughs> they just love me. It is hard. It is hard to get Bill Clinton to leave. Just ask the guys who tried to impeach him. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Wow. This is a real national security breach because now our enemies know Air Force One doesn't have a horn. <laughs> oh, this is big news. This is big news. Uh -huh. uh, let's see. Over the weekend. Did you hear guys say this? Three pages of Donald Trump's 1995 tax return were leaked, revealing that he declared a $916 million loss from his three Atlantic City casinos. That is right. I'm worried about him, too. <laughs> Donald Trump lost money on casinos. You know what they say, the house always loses. <laughs> but here's the thing. As a real estate developer, he was then able to use that loss to wipe out more than $50 million a year in taxable income over 18 years. Well, when life gives you lemons, don't pay taxes. <laughs> now, the idea that Trump hasn't paid taxes in nearly 20 years is bound to be unpopular with, what's the word, uh, people. <laughs> But according to the former Rudy Giuliani, Trump... <laughs> he used to be Rudy Giuliani, right? I'm not wrong there. He used to be Rudy, right? He, he used to be Rudy Giuliani. Mm -hmm. According to him, Trump not paying taxes just proves how smart he is. The reality is, this is part of our tax code. The man's a genius. Yes, only, only a genius can lose a billion dollars running a casino. <laughs> How loose were his slots? You know what? I'll tell you what. I like you. I'm gonna comp everyone's room forever. <laughs> and Giuliani pounded out. He pounded out and he pointed out. Giuliani pointed out. <laughs> he pointed out Trump's not the only one who avoids paying taxes. You think it's a good example to avoid 
to basically being able to avoid paying federal taxes? Well, f first of all, a lot of the people that are poor take advantage of loopholes and pay no taxes. Those are loopholes also, and they pay no taxes. Yeah, those crafty poor people. You know those poor people with their loopholes? And don't get me started on the cunning homeless who have found a way around property tax. So Giuliani thinks Trump is a genius, and naturally Donald Trump agrees. <laughs> Tweet bragging, I know our complex tax laws better than anyone who has ever run for president, and I am the only one who can fix them. <laughs> yes, he's the only one who can fix our tax codes, just like Hannibal Lecter is the only one who could catch Buffalo Bill. <laughs> I'd like to help you fix the tax code, Clarice. But first, hand over Hillary's liver. I'm going to eat it with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. No. No. Well, you know, if you think about it, it's not like Donald Trump does his own taxes. Well, He's not out there, like, doing the numbers. Yeah. Shouldn't we really be voting for his accountant, Jack Mitnick? <laughs> and because, let's face it, Mitnick, there's just something about Mitt that screams presidential. <laughs> and Donald Trump wasn't done making news. On Saturday, he turned a simple rally in Pennsylvania into a free-form poetry slam. Our country is becoming a third-world country. People walk to the office. They walk to get a loaf of bread. They get shot. CNN, Clinton News Network, which nobody's watching anyway, so what difference does it make? She could be crazy. She could actually be crazy. They don't make movies like they used to. Is that right? And they sure as hell don't make presidential candidates like they used to. Am I right? They don't. These, these, and I, tiny, tiny hands, tiny hands, tiny hands. At the same rally, Trump urged his supporters to go out on Election Day and perform their civic duty. You've got to go out, and you've got to get your friends, and you've got to get everybody you know, and you've got to watch your polling booths, because I hear too many stories about Pennsylvania, certain areas. I hear too many bad stories, and we can't lose an election because of you know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, no, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Donald, you left out all the nouns. <laughs> he keeps leaving out all the... Yeah, it was here. He just kind of implies. It's expressive. He kind of free forms his ways rather. He doesn't say, he doesn't say right. everything, but then again, being a demagogue is like jazz. It's the racism you don't say. <laughs> now, thank you. Accusations have also surfaced this weekend that Trump sexually harassed women who worked on The Apprentice. According to some co-workers there, Trump openly discussed which female contestants he wanted to have sex with, speculating which one of them would be, quote, a tiger in bed. Of course, the truth is, Trump is the one who's the real tiger in bed. He's orange. <laughs> He's got a lot of hair. And every day he refuses to come on this show, he proves he's a huge pussy. <laughs>